Hello again, this time I'm going to be covering Everettsville. Uh, this is actually one of my least favorite battles, so we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Uh, first things first, I want to clear up the extra units from Fredericksburg that I'm not going to be keeping. Uh, the reason for this is we're currently sitting at, well, not quite, uh, four cores, but we're a little over three, and the next several battles don't allow us to use more than uh, two to three cores. Uh, so I'm going to be getting rid of all of the skirmishers and almost all of the artillery. This is going to help me boost uh, the recruits a little bit, and it'll bring scaling back down, um, since I won't have a bunch of extra units sitting around that don't actually do anything. These three I'm going to keep around uh, for the battle ahead. It's slightly more efficient to use those than uh, otherwise. Which I'll explain more in a little bit. Uh, this unit I'm actually going to keep. I'm going to replace, uh, use it to uh, for my more, or for, uh, to use the weards with. Um, stats are real quick these in here so if we look at these this was a brand new unit um, but this one was placed a little differently and wasn't doing counter battery so it actually got more kills uh, so the stats are considerably better on this one uh, so I'm just gonna disband this unit and end up moving the cannons over to here So I think that's most of it. So then I'm going to move uh, units down to 5th Corps. Uh, and I'm going to have one unit that's going to need really good... Actually, you're going to move down. You're going to move down because we're going to need one unit that's going to hold all our artillery and stuff. Uh, and it's going to need a lo uh, really good... Oh, here they are. We're going to need really good command for that uh, division, so... Get rid of these. Okay. Gonna want some cannon. We're going to make that sniper unit 3 star before we get, we're done. And then I'm just going looking for... Let's see. Where's my other 3 star 24 pounder? I think the other one's a little bit worse off. Oh, we're going to bring you. And bring you. Alright, this unit, if I switch the general out, I'm going to get 3 stars on. There's just picking up all these militia units and going to train, turn them into something more useful. We're going to take pretty heavy casualties on the units that are fighting in this battle, uh, which is why I'm not using any of my good stuff. Um, I've tried a couple different ways of playing it, and I haven't. There's no real good way, so we're going to do the slightly more expensive route. It's looking close because we got 15 units for this battle. Okay, you got the three star there. Uh, this the range on this map isn't far enough to use the Whitworth, so I'm just going to switch to the 10 pounder. Yes, sir. And we're going to need a 
better major general, so let's go find one quick. I think it needs about at least 50% experience. Sure, you'll work. I just need to get these guys sorted. So you're decent. Pretty decent. Okay, I'll give rifles to these two. Just swapping stuff around. So these units are again going to be a little oversized, uh, they're going to be taking the majority of casualties in this battle, uh, but they also need to do a decent amount of fighting, so I can't give them uh, weapons that are too bad. So we'll give some of them Harper's Ferries and we'll give some of them Enfields, uh, those will do well enough. Ferries goes to the better unit. And I could do this with some of my two star units, but pretty much no matter how I play this, uh, these units are going to take somewhere between 300 to 600 casualties, and I just don't want to pay that on a more expensive unit. So I'm just going to use these guys where the losses don't hurt as much. Name you briefly. You do not need a general in charge. Since these units are going to get hit pretty hard, I'm going to put low level officers on them. Uh, and it's good enough in terms of command that'll work out. Uh, so for these units, we're going to do something a little different. Um, something that I almost never do outside of the end of the campaign. Um, oops. We should make sure spend our career points. Haven't spent any money yet, so not a problem. Uh, and I'm just going to max out training next, I think. So for these units, uh, we are basically just going to make the biggest melee uh, battering ram we can. You probably don't need to go quite this high. You could probably just stick around 2,000 or something. Um, but I figure this way I'm going to get more units experience. I'm going to take about the same amount of losses, and it should be completely overwhelming in melee. So, And to do this, I'm going to have to buy farmers. Uh, and I'm sort of looking at this as a two-part investment. Uh, the first part is these weapons start to disappear later in the campaign and around um, post Cold Harbor you have three battles in a row where you have to plow through very heavy fortifications and this is pretty much the cheapest way to do it. Uh, so even though I'm not going to use these weapons a whole lot uh, they will be they will come in handy later and I'm sort of weighing this as do I want to take you know, several thousand extra casualties on uh, better units, or do I want to spend that money on something that, uh, you know, is going to be cheaper in the short term, and I guess mm, that's not the really way I put it. It's more, ex more expensive in money, less expensive in terms of veterans lost. Uh, I'm going to swap the officers out on these guys just because we're lowering our efficiency a little bit. I'm, I don't mind if it's a little lower. Uh, I don't really want it that low. Uh, arguably, I should probably just use the worst officers I can, not care about the penalty, and then... Uh, that's more than I need, 
isn't it? Let's see if we can get away with Lieutenant Colonel. Uh, arguably, I should just use worse officers because these guys are having a decent chance of getting wounded. Uh, but I think it'll be all right. Okay, so I've got my battering ram, I've got my distraction force, and then I've got units to inflict casualties while I wait. Oh, and we want to swap out generals. Just because I want the extra cover bonus, the melee bonus, and the... Actually, that reminds me, I should remember to do that when I go in. Um, and the experience bonus. So I'll save quick. So you can see we're pretty much at minimum scaling, uh, 50,000, and we have pretty decent values here. We got fairly, uh, mm, I think that's a transfer and they got veterans, so that isn't actually that good. Um, but these numbers are still manageable. So the other reason that I can get away with using those giant units in this side battle is uh, two part. Uh, one, the for this side battle, I'm fairly underscaling. Uh, part of that is I have all the this in, the rest of this entire army is filled with units that are all around 900 to 1,000 at the moment. Uh, so that counterbalances or averages out against those six units of 2,500. Uh, you can see if we go over to Stones River, uh, I guess I didn't show it before I created them, but um, we're gonna be f we'd be facing about 80,000. I delete those six units, and this drops by about 20,000 men. Um, so I will not be keeping them around for that next battle. Uh, but for this one, we can afford to get away with it, and we'll actually be going in with almost even numbers, just because of the way uh, the size is being balanced out. I'll explain a little bit more about different strategies you can do after I get everything set up. Uh, what I'm basically going to be doing is uh, I'm going to be holding off with these melee units, uh, they're only going to go in pretty close to the end. Uh, and while I do that, these units are going to be spending their time distracting people. So my goal is, is to take out as much of the Union force as I can before going straight into the middle with my melee units. Uh, so they take less damage, and so they hopefully are only going to run into one or two units as opposed to running into four or five. Because uh, if you run into four or five, then you get bogged down, the entire map is trees, and then it, it's a bad time. Okay, that's all set up. You get going. Get some orders out here first. And the reason I brought the Whitworths is I know I'm not going to be envisioned for most of this battle, so the extra accuracy is just going to be more damage. Uh, arguably, I probably should have brought one of those three-star uh, artillery units instead, um, but I guess I wanted to level this guy up a little bit, so we'll do that. Uh, there's a skirmish unit right there, so I don't want to go too far forward with the general, just because if he gets spotted, then stuff starts coming over early, and we don't really want that. These guys are just going to wait, so they can sit here. Sending some of these skirmishes over just in case something weird happens with the cavalry. There's a bunch of cavalry on this map. I don't want them fighting these guys. So usually these guys are perfectly safe here, but not always. So. Just as a little backup plan, because I'd rather them uh, them take losses than any of my snipers. So once I get set up here, I'll explain a little bit more. I 
I guess uh, one of the strategies you can do is you just put everything up here. You get into these trees, fight off the units that come over, and then you slowly flank, flank around the top, get this unit out, and just roll up everything from behind. Um, that involves a lot of fighting units and heavy cover, though, which I don't really like to do, and you pretty much just take losses when you do it. Um, so instead, I've come up with this, this plan. The goal is to fight units right here, where they're not in cover. Uh, the other option, and what I'm going to be doing later on, is you just slam a bunch of units right into here, hold the center against both sides, and then take this point. Um, get these guys situated. open and then get the skirmishers forward to hopefully get some charges uh, so you can just slam through here uh, the problem is is there's a bunch of roaming units that aren't in fortifications that will come after you and as you can see these are all three stars uh, so getting into fights in the woods with three star units is never pleasant so we're gonna try and uh, beat these guys down before we do that um, oh you can see one of those free roamers coming from all the way over here um, come on, give vision of something or other. I guess you aren't quite in position yet, so I could wait. Leave them in vision to pull this unit over. Hopefully we can get them to stop right about here. Perfect. So we don't want to move these units too far forward because the vision on this map is really weird. Uh, and you will get spotted and that kind of messes this plan up. Uh, so I'm going to leave them right about here and they should be fine. All right. Run them off and I'm going to back up the infantry again. Uh, I'm going to try and keep the infantry hidden. Uh, it's really hard on this map because there are multiple places where you will be shown as hidden and the enemy artillery will still shoot you. Uh, it's really annoying. Uh, also, it, a lot of times it just doesn't make any sense. Like, you'll be hidden here, but you won't be hidden here, or something like that. Uh, if we're lucky, some of the enemy artillery will show itself. It'll come down here where we can see it, uh, and that's always nice. Got them stopped right where we wanted to again, so we're going to move the infantry forward once more. They're about half out, so move the, this guy down. I'm going to send the skirmishers back to uh, get their full size back again, and then I'm going to send them back out again. probably see all these units technically hidden probably gonna get shot by artillery oh maybe not for once nice uh, 
stopped a little early. It's all right. Got to be a little careful with this because this can draw cavalry over. Oh, there's the cavalry going. This time it's not great. It should be all right. Uh, skirmishers up there to flank a little bit. Once this is calmed down, I'll talk about the third strategy. I just got to be real careful about managing the charges here. Uh, if I don't pay attention for a second, things can go really bad. So just don't want to mess that up. As you can see, there's several artillery units in here, and these units just get pounded, so. That's why they're a little over strength. kill off the skirmishers because they're what can see me. Might not have retreated these guys in time. spot where they can sort of hit me and I can't hit them easily. Also there's three units here which is never good. Okay we got one routed. Actually this unit's gonna go up there. I'm gonna swap out these units so that take a little bit switch where the damage is getting is coming going in on. Let's try and get him first. Routed. Oh, we screwed up. Went too far forward. Something or other came over here and lost more snipers. Lost the division commander? No, oh, we lose. Okay. Hopefully, we can get this unit to back up. Okay, get out of vision. I'm not sure. See, this is what I'm talking about where the vision cones make no sense. So we've got until 1400, so we've got plenty of time, which was like, I afford to do this sort of thing.
could tell this guy to not fire because he's not very effective at this range, but it also doesn't really matter. Um, okay, I'm just going to move up and push this guy out. So I want to get him out of there, so I want my units up there. Really sad he stopped charging. That would have been nice. It's gonna take give me a few more losses than I normally take, I think. Often if you can keep him from getting up here, you'll do better. Hopefully he'll route soon. Ignore that. This is getting a little ridiculous. Maybe I should have used move the 24 pounders up or something. Okay, there we go. Back off. Took way too much damage on this guy doing that. And we stink it lucky. Sometimes one of the cannon units will move here. And you can hit it. Move this guy back. And hopefully we'll be hidden again. Like I said, vision on this map is ridiculous. It's one of the reasons why doing stuff is hard, because this, this doesn't get better if you go to other areas of the map either. You just have to run around in circles and hope you... Oh, finally. Oh, you'd have to move forward a lot. Uh, no. Oh, you fired him. Hopefully sometime soon this guy will be hidden. You know, there, there's clearly no units anywhere near me, and they can still hit this unit. Like, it just doesn't make any sense. But now we can start working on that artillery piece at least. Oh, why are you moving? Oh, you have to move forward a lot to get to that guy. That's all right. Got the general though. Let's see if I can draw in another charge. Can't see the can again for some reason. Let's see, you see. This guy is somehow hidden, even though he wasn't hidden back here earlier. It, maybe that one of the skirmishers is further back or something, but it just no consistency. Not 
not sure what's going on with just not getting anything to route. There we go. Now I have to try and hide again. Stays in vision, and we can kill him. Sometimes the artillery comes all the way up here, which is really nice. Yeah, we've taken pretty high losses on these guys. At least we're going to be able to get rid of one of these units. Vision bug that doesn't make any sense. Very good shape there. Let's get these guys moving. Probably could, maybe could do this a little earlier. I'll try and hide again. Come on. There we go. Oh, nope. They're still getting shot. For Not controlling this particularly well, but this will work. Oh, except I don't have my militia up front. Also, don't really need to be on double fast forward at this point. Charging the cannon because that's what I actually want to get to. Uh, you can see my timing here is very poor. These units should be right here. Um, but we route this unit real quick. We got lucky there's not a second unit there, uh, which is nice. Sometimes there will be extra units there. Engines back, so I don't really want to fight this at the moment. I just want to put a blocking force there. Uh, you guys, 
these are actually in pretty good shape. Trying to prevent these guys from routing out of the pocket. Normally I would walk them forward a bit more and then do that, but I just want to... I don't want to sit there trading fire. I only need to be charging for a little bit of time. Well, there are a lot of other units up there, which is not great. We got them out of the position we wanted. Now these guys can go back and rest. artillery up. So this part didn't go as well as it could have, uh, and I didn't play this middle part particularly well. Um, you could probably actually get away with using fewer units. Like you could probably do this with four uh, militia units if you stack them up correctly, uh, as opposed to hitting piecemeal like I did. Um, but like I said, I wanted the weapons for later, so I'm not, not too worried about that. Uh, now for the next part, we've still got two hours. Uh, there's another artillery unit down here. There's two more skirmishers, a cavalry unit, and probably three or four more infantry units. So I could go down after this. Uh, I'm hesitant to do so because I think I'm just going to take more losses and you're fighting through trees the entire time. So I'm probably just going to stack up all of my artillery and let them blast away. I might go up here a little bit more. We'll see. Uh, so the other option you can do is you could sort of put a holding force here or you can just completely flank all the way this way. Uh, if you bring units down here you can get all the way along this edge and you can get to about here before you'll get spotted. Uh, so you can flank this position fairly well if you want to but I find if you don't clear out these three star units earlier then you don't end up um, you get bogged down really badly in here. may do a little bit more, I'm not sure yet. But I want these units to, oh, if I get charged, oh, shoot. Not want them to take any more shots. But this charge is actually very nice. Uh, it means I'm gonna be able to do more damage. And it means I can come in up here. So I'm not going to trade particularly effectively. The artillery is going to do most of the work here. Send you guys up here. Actually, you can stop because you're better at long range. You guys can move down.
do have to remember to actually capture this soon. Uh, I'll just do that right now. So sometimes I'll just sit right here and, oh, there we go, I can back up a little bit. Sometimes I'll just sit hidden and let my artillery blast away. Um, in this case, things look a little bit more favorable, so that's why I'm doing some extra shooting. Um, I'm not sure if I'm trading effectively here or not, it's hard to say. Um, this is looking, this is probably useful. Uh, you do need to be careful with this fortification. Uh, you can literally have units sitting right here and they cannot shoot this sometimes. Um, it's one of those weird fortifications that doesn't seem like it has a flank and is just frustrating in most cases. Oops. Actually, not sure about this, but I'm just gonna charge. Oh, there's a second unit back there. I'm going to back out from this, though. That's a clump I'm not sure I want to deal with. At least not initially. Not unless until I have more stuff in position. Probably taking away more casualties than I should by doing this, and I'm not sure if I'm actually going to get a whole lot out of it, but eh, it's, it's looking semi-favorable, so I decided to go for it. Yeah, the problem is now I'm out of condition, so things aren't going to go great, but... Okay, I'll take it. Um, that's about that's about what you get one way or the other. Um, so let's see. Round eleven thousand kills took about four thousand casualties. That's pretty much par for the course. Um, 
if I had played this more conservatively, uh, I probably would have saved about 500 to 500 uh, deaths, maybe. Uh, same thing up in the north. If I had gotten a little luckier or played a little better, um, you know, maybe maybe you can drop this value to about 3,000 um, using the strategy I used. Uh, but I found when I tried to actually clear the map, or if I used some of the other strategies, I was getting five to six thousand casualties. So, uh, four thousand to uh, ten thousand, uh, I'll take it. Uh, after medicine, that's going to be closer to three thousand. Um, so around three to one. Uh, not great, but with a battle that is this covered in trees, there's not a lot you can do. Um, it's it's almost like it's telling me that I should be mailing my way through the uh, Confederate campaign as opposed to trying to play it like a Union campaign. Uh, but mass artillery and snipers works really well in a lot of other battles, so I'll keep doing it. A um, couple of officers, but only one killed, so that's not too bad. Um, Keep taking more losses on those snipers. Uh, I guess eh, that's that's a little better than it has been, but optimally that number should be zero. Um, got some Harper's Ferries, it's always nice. So about even with personnel returned. Losing three officers wasn't great, but we're going to have way more officers than we need from this point forward, so that's fine. Um, anyone close to leveling? Oh, right, I didn't really look at kills. You did pretty good, as expected. Not bad. Yeah, about what I'd expect. And then we farm some pretty good stats on these guys. Uh, they're promptly going to, these are all promptly going to get disbanded. Uh, these guys are pretty decent, so I'll pr they'll probably stick around. Um, yeah, this guy took more and did less than I would have really liked. I would have preferred to see in about another hundred men on these guys, uh, but oh well. Um, and I got another transfer. It's a little high, but still looking okay. So yeah, I think we're going to be in really good shape going into Stones River. Uh, it's going to be, if you count all our troops, so you don't fight the battle with most of them. Um, you know, I'm going to be looking at only only being outnumbered by 15, 20,000 men. So that should go pretty well. Okay, that was Everettsville. I'll be back.